Leaving Earth to touch the cosmos is an experience few have ever known, but many have often dreamed of. Each of the participants aboard the Centennial Flight shared the dream of exploring the great unknown and the desire to take part in the opening of the space frontier. The Centennial Flight is dedicated to each of them and pays tribute to their families and their loved ones. Space shouldn't just be for a few highly trained civil servants. It should be for all of us. We're here to provide what we know to be a wonderful, emotional, closing experience where you can individually and collectively celebrate a life well lived, opportunities and dreams that you can verify, and oh by the way, you're going to a space launch, which is kind of cool in and of itself. First of all, let me just welcome everybody to Spaceport America. Um, what you're right here, this is a launch pad one. It's the first launch pad built here at Spaceport America, even before the runway and the hangar facility that you drove by, this was here. And uh, this is where we launched the Space Loft rocket, which you see behind me. The Space Loft rocket, uh, this will be its seventh flight. So if you look at the sticker on it, uh, it says SL7, so that, uh, that tells the the number flight that it is. So it's our seventh mission of this vehicle. Um, the vehicle weighs about 800 pounds, and tomorrow morning when you see it light up, it'll produce about 12,000 pounds of thrust, and it'll take off, and you'll see it burn for like 12 seconds as it streaks towards uh, space. Uh, when it burns out, it'll actually be at 12 seconds, it'll be higher than, uh, than the airplanes that you probably flew in coming here at 38,000 feet. It goes gets that high that fast. Then it will coast into space uh, for about four minutes, and then it'll uh, re-enter Earth's atmosphere. While you're watching and listening to the count, um, pay particular attention about seven minutes. Uh, one of my favorite parts of the whole mission is when it's re-entering Earth's atmosphere, it hits the atmosphere at Mach 3, so three times the speed of sound, and it, and it sends shock waves to the Earth, and you'll actually hear a boom boom. And that, that tells you it's coming back. Every, any object that goes to space and comes back makes that sound. That happens about seven minutes into the flight. In the blue nose cone, yeah, there's, it's made of three sections. You can three, see three blue sections of that. In the middle part of that nose cone is where the cremains are, are placed. So that's, that's where your loved one's uh, cremains are at this time. Yesterday, we loaded the rocket with all of, this, all of the um, payloads. So what you're going to see when you go out there, you're going to see the rocket in its upright position. The top half of that is the payload. You'll obviously see the bright blue um, nose cone, the cylinder after that until that middle section has some silver markings on it. That's where the payload is. And then the black part all the way to the back end is the motor. Um, solid rocket booster, which um, takes us to space. And of course, very important blue, cool looking fins at the bottom which keep us stabilized all the way up. At one point, as you'll see a balloon go up if you're watching, we send up two. The first one is a start to get some data for the winds aloft as well as on the ground near the surface. But then at about T minus 45, things start to get quiet, or at least they should, because we send up a second balloon. So when you see that second balloon going up, that's gonna be a sign that we are in terminal count. And it's the data from that balloon connected with the other ones that we use to get a firing solution. You may hear angles and degrees over the comm. That's us taking that uh, uh, launcher you see out there and moving it around so that it's pointed in exactly, precisely the right direction. Because once we launch it, physics takes over. It goes 70 miles up, we say, and 50 miles over. Those mountain ranges out there is about the beginning of White Sands Missile Range. They're about 20 miles away to give you a range. We go about 20 miles over that and we land over there. So up 70 into space, which is starts at 62, as you're probably aware, five or so minutes up there and then down on the other side coming in under a parachute. So that's the whole mission. It takes about 15 minutes. You'll hear the all clear 
and then it takes a little bit of an hour or two, depending on the situation. You'll see a helicopter sitting here. It will take off after we're all clear, and the crew gets on that. It will fly over, recover, and bring back the payloads. So that's our mission. I would like to compliment Celestis Incorporated and Christiana coordinated this effort because this is so special to so many people and so many families. Your loved ones, the people that are going to be a part of this, it is just phenomenal that this experience is taking place and all of you are going to be here. We are so happy that we have Spaceport America here that we will continue to do more of these types of activities. So I really want to welcome you and thank you so much for coming. My name is John Mulcahy and I want to thank Celestis for inviting me to this event. It's a rare opportunity to meet all of you and I look forward to that. Uh, I want to speak to all the other participants. I read a lot of bi biographies and was just incredibly impressed by the people that are going to be participating tomorrow, your family members, your loved ones. Um, it's a fulfillment of a dream, I can see that. It came through in the biographies. And you know, the fulfillment of that dream is shared by Eunice and I and our communities, because we're relying on the spaceport to fulfill our dreams as well, to help boost our economy. So we're all really uh, participants tomorrow in many ways, and it is your rocket. And I, I wish you the very best tomorrow, and I want to wish all of the participants tomorrow Godspeed. Every one of you here today including your departed loved ones, are making a contribution. And it's a contribution that feeds the future here for all of us. We want you to know that you're truly important to us and that we sincerely hope that we can make your stay not just enjoyable, but exciting. And I'm sure tomorrow morning is gonna be exciting for all of us. I love being part of the Celestis family and I love the service they provide. I love meeting all of you who, you know your reasons for being here. You have someone who either through passion or interest or job, career, for some reason, they wanted to be up there. And out of love and respect, you've chosen to honor their wishes. And I know what that's like. And I'm so glad you have a rocket to find. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to find one when Jimmy passed away. Thank you again, Charlie. It's a unique experience because memorials are for the living and you're, you're mourning the loss of someone, someone that you cared about a great deal. And yet when the rocket goes up, as much as you miss them and as much as you love them, you are so excited and so happy and so joyful that you get to experience what they really wanted. And you just know that they are somewhere yelling Yahoo because they finally made it. And it's an unbelievable experience. And I'm really glad you guys are gonna have a chance to, to feel what it's like. This afternoon is really focused on you all, your loved ones, and who's on board. It's the participants, not the hardware that make these missions so memorable. It was just over a year ago, I was standing in uh, Cocoa, Florida. We had uh, about 300 folks. We had about 320 folks on the first launch of a commercial rocket to the space station. And I told the folks that were there in charge of the mission, you all may think this is your rocket, but I have 300 people that are with me that know it's theirs. And the same is true for every one of our missions. You know that this is your rocket and that tomorrow you're fulfilling a dream of your loved one. And that's what we're here to celebrate today. Jim McCune is, is the person, he's my father. And, you know, when I think of my dad, uh, I, I think of passion. You know, he 
You know, he had a couple great passions in his life. You know, the first was science and knowledge. You know, he absolutely loved it. You know, he studied physics in college. He told everyone he knew that he was going to go up into space someday, so that was always a great thing. And we decided what we do is put his name in space. Because when you look down and you look around and you look at names, you're going fast, you miss them. All you have to do here is just look up, and there's your loved one. He dreamed of experiencing the freedom of space. NASA TV was his favorite channel. I'd come home from work and he'd be watching it. He tracked the space station on his computer and whenever it was overhead, he would listen in on his ham radio. It's really perfect actually that he gets his chance to break the bonds of gravity and to head up there. And I'm really jealous, but someday, as someone said, we have a lot of ashes and we'll get to go together. If you ever had a problem figuring out a gift, not only to be good, but the best, and it's pretty hard to do that. We just hit a home run, forget it. This is the best gift. He always told us when, what moon was going to be, what planets you could see. Unfortunately, he could not tell us his last wishes. I don't know if this is more for us or for him, but we're here. The definition of hero um, is a person of distinguished value, value, a person admired for their achievements and notable qualities, one who shows great courage, and every person is a hero to somebody. Uh, Kathy was my hero. It was just awesome, just awesome. Uh, we waited, like you said, and uh, it was just more than we ever, we ever expected. It was better than uh, could ever imagine just to see that rocket go up and uh, follow that contrail up to the sky. And yeah, it was, it was fantastic. A beautiful morning. And Couldn't nice imagine for anything more exciting. I, I, I swear, it was about a year and a half we we contacted with, with uh, Celeste, just waiting, and then. It was a great morning for her to uh, see the lift off. You know, it was more than what I anticipated, and it was so exhilarating. I'm really thankful to see it. Yeah. John loves space travel and space exploration, anything to do with the stars or the moon, and so he's been interested in this for a long time. And and that's how I knew from the beginning that he wanted to have his ashes sent into space. It was a great ending to the wonderful days that we spent here, seeing the spaceport and, and touring the facility. I learned really a lot about the rocket and all the details and just a great time here and then this was a wonderful end to it. My stepdad, uh, Don McNeil, was a huge fan of the NASA channel 
watched it all the time, and he also was a big fan of NASCAR. Basically, if it went fast and involved machinery, he was all in. It was terrific. I, I've never done anything like it, and uh, I don't think he had ever done anything like it either, so I got to do it on his behalf, and, and uh, his son is also here, and so we all, we all got to enjoy it together. Um, he was my husband of 32 years, childhood sweethearts, high school sweethearts, and um, he just loved looking up at the planets and the stars and the moon. Unfortunately, I didn't think it was gonna be so soon, but he did pass away two years ago, and this, is, this was my gift to him. Charlotte uh, has been my wife for 23 years. Uh, uh, she is, uh, we got married uh, in 90, I think it was, 91. The idea of doing something in space was intriguing to me. Words can't explain it. It was just fantastic to see that rocket go up and, uh, and I was very excited with it. John was an amazing guy. He was an aerospace engineer, which is where the, the love of space came in. And um, as a child, he loved the Apollo missions and spent a whole bunch of time, you know, glued to the television, watching every single one. And that inspired his, his whole career. He was just a very, very adventurous person. And I know that uh, this is the kind of thing that really would have just given him a lot of joy. My mom and uh, dad have been together forever. And my Aunt Candy got, uh, uh, they were, they've taken care of my Aunt Candy for most of her adult life. Mom had said as she put it together for Candy that boy, one day when she goes, this is how she wants to go out. Yeah. And it came a little sooner than expected, but you know, she got to ride with her sister on this rocket. When that thing went off, that was so cool. It's hard to say goodbye. It's any loss is difficult, but when you can give someone something that they couldn't give themselves, I think that's what, you know, my entire family feels with Celestis is that you've given us something that he could have never given himself and that we could never create ourselves.